everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new flavor of Arco Linux. Now, for those of you who don't know, Arco is my by far favorite distribution out there right now. I think it's the best distribution based on Arch. I think it has the best community surrounding it. I'm just in love with Arco. I mean, I have been for over a year now. I tried to move away from it just because, you know, distro hopping is cool. Uh, <laughs> But I ended up coming back to it, and I made a video about that if you want to check that out. One of the things I love about Arco is that you have a huge selection of pre-configured window managers and desktop environments. It's not something that you really see in every distribution out there. Now, like, Manjaro has three official flavors, and ha we call them flavors because Ubuntu calls them flavors. But uh, Manjaro has three official ones, and they have several community ones. Fedora has several spins. Obviously, Ubuntu has several, you know, flavors that are available to you. But Arco ha tends to have window managers and desktop environments and stuff that aren't readily available pre-configured in other distributions. For example, Xmonad is there. They have Qtile. They have IceWM. There's just tons. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are like 20 window managers and desktop environments available now something some crazy number i don't i don't know the exact number but they just have way more than everybody else and i don't know how they go about supporting so many but they do a really good job so the one i'm going to be taking a look at today is, is a window manager that i had never heard of before and i still don't know that much about so this is truly a first look i mean i played around with it a little bit last night just to so i wasn't a complete idiot when i did this video but Outside of a few things, I know very little about what's going on in this window manager, other than it's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to be doing this in a virtual box, virtual machine. And I've got this here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start it. Now, I, I am going to go through and install this in front of you, even though it's a, just a standard... Arco Linux install. There's nothing really all that special about it. It's as good as any other Arco Linux installer out there. I believe this is Arco Linux B. So this is the one that has a dedicated just regular window manager that you can choose from the download site. Whereas the original, the usual Arco Linux, just like the bog standard one, has three, distrib three window managers or window, uh, desktop environments on it. And the, the, I might have those letters mixed up. I don't know. Sometimes Arco Linux, as much as I love it, can be a little confusing because they have so many things to offer. Um, but despite all that, this is FMWV3, I believe is actually what it's called. Yeah, FVWM3. Now, one thing I did notice is that on the live ISO, it loads pretty slow. I noticed this last night when I was looking at it for the first time. This, this initial loadup is pretty slow. Now, when I was in the installed version on a VM, it loaded fine. It was quick as anything else. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on here. I, I will cut away and come back. When, oh, not ah, spoke too soon. It's here. Now, I'm not going to play too much with it, but already you can see some things that are a little weird, right, from d different window managers. Uh, there's this whole thing down here in the corner. We'll talk about that here when we after we install it. This up here is Polybar, so we're just going to go ahead and install now. By default, I believe it's by default, the Arco Linux Calamari's tool will install this with ButterFS, and I'm going to go ahead and choose EXT4 this time. Now, I installed it with ButterFS last night, and it worked just fine. But I'm just just because I want to go through and ensure that this works the first time through, I'm going to go ahead and use the EXT4 because I'm more comfortable with that. So I'm going to go ahead and run Calamari's here. And this is just regular Calamari's as you would see in any other Arco Linux installer. So American English is what we need. I will choose the LTS kernel. I've been choosing the LTS kernel more often just because I, I don't feel like upgrading my kernel over and over again. Because now that I'm not distro hopping every two and three weeks, it actually matters that I don't want to, you know, have to keep reinstalling kernel. I don't need any of this other stuff for now. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the open source drivers. 
and then everything else normally when you're going through and installing this you'll go through and install any of the programs that you want to install now I'm not going to install anything I'm just going to take a look at what's installed by default uh, once we're done installing it so I'm just going to fly through all of these things this is another reason why I love Arca because no other distribution out there gives you this type of control over what's installed on your system before install none of them uh, the ones that the only one that I can think that comes close is maybe I, mean, I can't even think of one that comes close to this round I, I was trying to think of there are a few others out there that give you like a choice over like what browser you're gonna use but none of them have this type of you know choice this is awesome right <laughs> this is the way I mean I, I can understand why you wouldn't want like the like a new user to have to face, I mean, like a truly new Linux user, you wouldn't want to have to face this. But chances are, if you're a truly new Linux user, you're going to go use Linux Mint or you're going to use Ubuntu. You're not going to find Arco and try to install FMWV3 as a window manager. It's just not going to happen. So stop talking Mint and install it, would you? Okay. Uh, time zone is correct. Uh keyboard is correct we'll erase the disk with no swap and we'll type in some credentials here and we use f fmwv3 wm or vert i don't care and then our password and we'll use the same for the administrator account hit next install and we're going to install now i will go ahead and cut the video here and we'll notice the time is 1945 so we'll see how long this takes okay that took about four minutes or so it's 1949 now so all we're going to do now is just go ahead and uh, normally what you do is just leave that restart button there checked and then let the system restart after removing your installation media because I'm on VirtualBox I'm gonna go remove the installation media from VirtualBox and the best way to do that is just to shut down instead of restart so I'm gonna do that now so all right we'll check out some startup times here I don't think we'll have a problem because like I said before it was pretty fast like yeah that was lightning quick even on VirtualBox so we'll type in our password here and this is FMWV3 now this is the standard Arco Linux welcome app. It allows you to update the mirrors and then just gives you some easy buttons here for finding out information about the distro and getting support and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and bypass this because pretty much, if you've, you chances are if you're looking at FMWV3, you've probably used Arco before. So this is just the standard Arco welcome app. It's just as good as any other. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. Now... Let's talk about the elf in the room. What the hell is this stuff down here? I, When I first saw it, I was like, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So basically what this is, is these are your workspaces. So for, I will say this up front is that I'm not 100% sure how this works. Or more, I should say that my knowledge of what this does and what it works is very limited so if I explain something inappropriately or un you know, unsuccessfully I apologize for that up front just know that this is a first look I've only looked at it for maybe a grand total of an hour total uh, so just keep that in mind so basically the way I understand it is that you actually have three like categories of workspaces and I believe you can have more from what I saw in the configuration file but I'm not sure I haven't played around with it but by default, at least in this version of it, you have three categories. And each category has nine total workspaces. So you have a total of 27 workspaces, if my math is correct. We'll just, you know, we can count them, I suppose. But So each one has nine. You have a total of not nine in each in three of different categories. So you have main, code, and play. Now, like I said, you can customize the names of those things, and you can, I believe, add more if you wanted to. Now, anyone who knows me and or has been following the channel for a while knows that I love having 18 or 20 workspaces. And when I first saw this, I was like, this thing has 27 workspaces. I'm like, this is my heaven. 
<laughs> like this is this this is right up my alley. Like I don't. It feels like this is like something that I'd really really like. Now, one thing you also notice is that FMWV is a floating window manager. This is not a Tyler, so that's one knock against it in my opinion. But I'm not a big floating window manager person. But if you like something like Open Box, or if you liked that Flux Box that we took a look at, at you know like maybe a month ago that was an MX Linux. If you like those kind of things, this is like really kind of cool. So the other thing I've noticed, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more when we talk about the configuration file, is that you're very much reliant on the mouse here to change your workspaces. Now there are, you can use Super 2 and 3 to go to different categories. And supposedly you can use Super like F2 or something to go to, go up, oops. Yeah, I changed this thing and yeah thank you <laughs> thank you obs for actually working for once and, and i didn't want you to work that time um anyway <laughs> uh as you can tell i have a feeling that the reason why my f2s and f1s and stuff doesn't work is because i'm having conflicting problems with you know obs and probably the window managers i have on underneath this and stuff it's all i, I have so many key bindings I'm, I'm sure there's some kind of conflict there. So that's probably the reason why that doesn't work. But supposedly you can use your keyboard to navigate between the workspaces, not only the categories, one, two, three, but also the specific categories. How you do that, I, I still haven't figured that out. And the reason why is because the configuration file is very uh, complicated. Let me show you this. Now let's go ahead and make this full screen and zoom in here. Now this is Termite, because so this is an old friend. And Termite, as we know, is awesome. And everybody should use Termite, even though I'm still using, or, or I'm still cheating on it with Alacrity. Yeah. Anyway, so the configuration file is in .fvwm in your home directory. And if we do an ls here, we'll see that we have a configuration file, some themes, and the XDG menu. Now the XDG menu, if we make this smaller, and I think we can do it that way, Kim, you get your XDG menu by with the right click button. Yep, and that just gives you access to some programs and all of your stuff that's installed here. And we'll take a look at this here in a few minutes. Uh, if you left click, you get some other menu that allows you to restart, send to, resize, the iconify. I don't. I'm pretty sure that means like when you minimize this, because you can minimize this to here and it just goes away. So I think if you do this, no, that didn't work. I think I. Oh, you, know, you can reset, reset or um, restart F F F M W V. So that terminal we had is now apparently closed because it actually shows the thing normally if we do like alt tab i believe yeah there we go so alt tabs will bring the things that you've minimized back up for you it's not the prettiest alt tab you'll ever see it's just a list and but that's okay i mean it works i mean it's very it's meant to be minimal so let's go ahead and take a look at that configuration file that i was talking about so let's vim into config Okay, so this is the configuration file. So I believe that this is written in a like user-friendly syntax, kind of. It, it might be written in Perl. It might be written in C. It might be written in some kind of combination of things. I haven't been able to actually find out. I'm pretty sure it's kind of like uh, i3 and uh, maybe Spectre WM in that it's written in a way that it is user-configurable. And it's not really an actual language. But the reason why I say that it's something different than that is because it has different things that, like, the i3 thing really doesn't have. Like, it has set end here. I, I, I'm not actually sure what language it says. Now, if you go to GitHub, it will tell you... It will tell you that this is written in C, 98%. And Perl 3.8%, and then there's some other stuff here, but this is going to be mostly for making it as well. So, which of those things have to do with the configuration file? I'm not actually sure, but that's beside the point. So, the reason why it's a little confusing is because if we go down here to the bottom, and then we scroll up to the the key bindings, 
it doesn't do a good job of telling you what key it's actually using. So these are the key bindings here. So it says, as far as I can tell, the word key in this case means alt. So your alt key is the thing that you use to page through between windows, apparently. The silent key, which we'll actually see up here, I believe, somewhere. Maybe I'm... Yeah, right here. The silent key, I believe, is the 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 mod key, the, the, the super key. But there's no place where it actually says that. So I could be completely wrong. Where Up here where it explains things, it has like a little graph or whatever, is even more confusing. I, I don't know what this is supposed to mean. It has something to do with where the mouse is positioned on the screen and that where your mouse is positioned has some kind of effect on what the key bindings themselves do. It, it's very, very confusing. So <laughs> in, in the hour that I was able to use this last night and the little bit of time I've been using it now, I've still not have a clue what any of this means. Now, if you look, if we go to the, the website, if I can find the, the website actually, Okay, so after a little while of hunting, hunting and searching, I did manage to find the documentation on the bindings, and I saw this last night, but it has this documentation, which is supposed to be a correlation of what this is supposed to be representing, I think. Um, like, I don't... Numbers are buttons. I don't know what that means. Because, uh, of course, numbers are buttons. But I'm like, are they talking about like the keyboard? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know. And it's not, well explained. I should just say that this documentation, so it says, whenever a key is pressed or a mouse is clicked, FVWM takes note of the current location of the mouse. This is important because FVWM needs to know where the mouse was clicked, such as on the title bar or a, a particular window button. To understand how these work, let's first look at how a typical screen with one window and two iconified windows is set up. As shown in the figure below, FVWM divides the screen up into the following regions. Root window icon, which is the eye, which is up here. I, I, I'm assuming those are like minimized windows. I'm not actually sure. I'm assuming it defines iconify somewhere else. Uh, frame borders, frame slides, title bar, application window, window buttons, and anywhere. I'm confused, right? I'm like, I don't understand. I'm assuming that after a little while, I'd be able to figure this out, but it just feels a little weird, right? And I think that the reason why it's gotten so complicated is because there's so many workspaces and they have to not only add in the fact that this is not a tiling window manager, so they have to deal a lot more with the mouse than what you'd have to if you're in like DWM or Herb's Loft WM or whatever. But you also have to deal with the fact that you have so many workspaces. So that's a thing. That's one of that's in my very brief time of playing around with it. That was my number one. I'm not even gonna call it a complaint because there's probably absolutely nothing confusing about it. It's just again my little brain, you know, not being able to figure it out. And that's a common thing. I mean, it just is. Um, being completely honest, it just always is. But outside of this, it had the configuration file itself. It starts up several applications down here somewhere, I believe. So yeah, right here. So you can go through and do auto start right from this file. Uh, and it looks like it's fairly comprehensive in terms of the stuff that it does. It's just the syntax of it is a little weird because again i believe this is some kind of i'm not sure what language is i'm i'm, I'm gonna stop trying to guess i don't know I, i'm i'm sure learn linux is out there somewhere and he probably knows so the rest of this configuration file has to do with how things interact with the mouse how things interact with the screen and stuff it's looks like it's if if you're going to get into it there's a lot of stuff that you can do it's just going to be a matter of like i said figuring out the syntax and stuff. It looks. It also looks like, I mean, I complain about this, you know, documentation and, and it confusing me, but everything here, I mean, there's a ton of documentation here pretty much on everything 
it, it pretty much explains everything that you'd expect it to be, you know, ha have explained in a fairly reasonable way. It's just going to be a matter of time getting into to the documentation and actually figuring it out, right? So, let's figure out how to go through and get this smaller. So, that just takes it smaller. So, let's take a look at the installed applications. I'm just curious to see what Arco Linux will install out of the box without actually going through and installing anything from Calamari's. So, first, uh, we have... The better lock screen, which will help you uh, change the SDWM theme. Tweak tool disks, which is probably GNOME disk. The keyboard layout viewer, software token, variety and Vim, X archivers for unzipping things, Compton and PyCom. It's weird that both Compton and PyCom are installed. Are those? I thought Compton was depreciated like completely. It's weird that they're both here. Uh, get ahead, which is for Git, Meld, for comparing things, Sublime Text for your text editor, Flame Shot, and G Color 2. There's not a lot here. Pulse Audio Control. Simple Screen Recorder is installed by default, which is an interesting choice. Uh, the volume icon, which is just this thing up here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Chromium and Firefox are both installed by default. So is Discord and Telegram Desktop. Uh, for Office, you have WPS, which is, again, an interesting choice because usually it's LibreOffice, and I didn't check either of those. So by just default, it's going to give you an Office suite whether you want it or not, apparently. A Randers here, which is the graphical version for X Rander. And we have the Welcome String Bluetooth, LightDM, GTK Greeter. So just in case you switch to LightDM, it's auto automatically installed for the changing the theme. Power Manager, which is good, probably going to be the XFC Power Manager. Uh, XFCE terminal settings because the XFC terminal is here, I believe. No, URXVT, yep, is is one terminal. U XFCE terminal. We have Thunar, Termite, Gparted is here. Uh, bulk rename, and that's pretty much it. This is going to be Pemac. So that's what you get if you don't install anything from the Arco Linux Calamari's installer. So this is FVWM, and it's a floating window manager with a ton of workspaces that you pretty much have to use your mouse to navigate. And that's an interesting thing. There's supposedly a way to switch your windows to different uh, workspaces by dragging them. I'm not exactly sure how that goes about doing that. I haven't actually figured that out. So, oh wait a minute, hold on a second. It's it's, if he goes down, it goes to, if you can see this, I was up here, and now I'm on this one here. And if I drag up, yeah, now I'm on the second one, and back up, and now I'm on the first one. Now if I drag over here, yeah, I'm on, now I'm on this one. Okay, that's cool. So if you want to go through and drag your windows to different workspaces, even in different... Okay, so it only works, it only appears to work within the category of workspace you're in. So I can't take it from play to code by dragging it. That's, an, that's I mean, that's, I mean, if you're using it as it probably should be used, which is with your mouse, I mean, usually when you're using a floating window manager, you're not going to be reliant so much on the key bindings as you are if you were using a tiling window manager. So, you know, if you're using it with the mouse, that's cool functionality. So that's, I'm wondering if there's like a way you can reposition this. I'm assuming like maybe in your configuration file you can go through and reconfigure this so it's in a different position. Because like if it's like say you wanted it on the other side of the screen. Or even better, let's just say you didn't want it on the screen at all, but you just press a key binding and it shows up like in the center of the screen. That'd be really cool. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that'd be like I said, that'd be cool because then you don't have this. That way, if you have this full screen, and as you see, that disappears, or it did disappear. Apparently, if you, you go to a corner screen, it actually goes through and moves you to a different desktop. But uh, because it's disappeared, you have no way of moving to different desktops without actually going through and using your key binding, which is you know. Super Ship One or Super Super One, or or going through and making this small and going back here. So I'm wondering if there it might even exist having a key binding that just pops it up. 
that might exist. Uh, so I didn't actually find it, but then, like I said, I haven't used it for all that long. So I th think that this window manager has quite a lot of potential. So if I were a floating window manager guy, of the floating window managers that I've used so far, so I've used OpenBox, I've used Fluxbox, and now I've used F VWM. Of those three, I like this one the most. Maybe that's just because I love tons of workspaces, but I also kind of like the challenge. So as much as it confused me, that like that little diagram confused me, and the whole key binding thing and calling the keys something different than what I'm used to confuses me. I like that challenge and like the idea of being confused for a little while and actually trying to figure that out. So I'm going to leave this installed in a virtual box and I'm going to play with it from time to time and see if I can't uh, you know, learn to configure it a little bit because it's kind of cool. Um, whether or not I would actually ever install it on my main system, I don't know. Maybe uh, if, if I got it a little bit more familiar with it, it's possible because I have OpenBox installed on my system right now, but it can't pre-install, so that doesn't really count. So anyways, uh, let me know in the comments below if you're interested in trying FMWV3 and uh, or if you have tried it and what if you you know have some thoughts on it. So because I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've tried it before and maybe you know what the, what that diagram means you know more than I do. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow us on Facebook at the Linux Cast. You can also support us on Patreon at Patreon.com/LinuxCast. And just to let everybody know, if you support us on Patreon. You'll get early access to quite a few of our videos. So uh, sometimes it's only about 12 hours early access. Sometimes it's a full day. But uh, like this one here will be almost a full day. So uh, make sure you subscribe to us or support us on Patreon if you're interested in something like that. And I'd like to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.